Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for coming over the lunch. And of course, thank you for having us here today. My name is uh, Ming Min, and here is my colleague Hong Liang. We are both software engineers with streaming data team at Uber. And our team manages the uh, messaging system that we built on top of Apache Kafka. Today, we will be talking about how we do synchronous replication across multiple data centers for our messaging system. Here is the agenda today. We will first talk about some of the motivations and our use case for synchronous replication across multiple data centers. And then we will discuss about some of the challenges for uh, transactions across data centers for a typical storage system. Then we will talk about our setup and some of the failure scenarios we want to support. And at the end, last but not least, we will discuss some of the future work on our roadmap. All right. So why do we do uh, cross-DC replication? Uh, messaging system is very popular at Uber. It's widely used by many, um, many services, including some of the hypercritical data use cases. And for those use cases, uh, for example, like financial data or payment, we need to guarantee no data loss, even in the event of a disaster. And a disaster really means, like, for example, a data center sinks into the ocean. In this case, we still need to guarantee no data loss. And which means we need to replicate our data across to, to our other data center. And doing it asynchronously is not sufficient because we need to acknowledge the producer that the data is really persist in the other data center. In addition to the no data loss guarantee, we also have some other requirements. For example, we are running on our own uh, on-premise data centers, including all our, like, the, the services that using this messaging system. We need to provide very low latency and very high throughput for both producers and consumers. And then last one, we need to provide very high availability. Like even during a failover, we need to make sure the data is available for read. Before we discuss our so solution, we want to briefly discuss some of the challenges for our transactions across multiple data centers. I quote this table from a tech talk by Ryan Brett in Google I.O. 2009. Here, he listed five different approaches for transactions across multiple data centers, including backups, master safe, master master, two-phase commit, and Paxos. And he compares uh, these different approaches for different metrics. And as you can see here in this table, different approaches have different pros and cons. For example, two-phase commit and Paxos provides strong consistency and full transactions, but they are not very good in terms of performance, like uh, the latency is higher, the throughput is not that good. Uh, if you look at master-slave and master-master approaches, they are very good in terms of performance. Uh, they have very low latency and very high throughput, but they don't provide very strong uh, consistency or a transaction guarantee. In our case, we don't need transaction guarantee, but uh, for the, the other like consistency, latency, throughput, or all of the others we, we need uh, all green. But if by looking at this table, it's very sad to, to it's very sad that we cannot find even one column with all green. And the reason behind it is simply the a limit of speed of light. To overcome this problem, we need to find uh, a data center that is close enough to our own uh, data center. In which case, uh, cloud come to, comes to rescue. And luckily for us, we can find some uh, AWS avail availability zones that are close enough to our own data center. 
with that, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Hong Liang to talk about our, our topology and setup. Okay, so, uh, with the help of a, a very big zones on clouds, here's the typical XDC Kafka cluster looks like a Uber. So a single XDC cluster will spread across three data centers, as well as a zookeeper cluster, one in Uber data center and uh, two in available zones on cloud. Uh, for all the topics in this cluster, we set the replication factor to three, uh, and uh, also all the replica will spread across three data centers, which means each data, uh, the Uber data center or the available zones will have exactly one replica of each partition. We also set the mean SR equals two on the broker side. That means when a client produces a message, the broker will persist at least two copies of the data in two different data centers before sending back the acknowledgement. So when a client uh, produces a message, if they set the X equals to all, we can guarantee at, at least one delivery for all the messages. Also in this cluster, the partition leader uh, has equally distributed in three data centers. The benefit of doing this is we can have a better load rebalance. So let's talk about the failure scenarios we want to support in the XDC Kafka. So the first scenario is the Kafka nodes in Uber data center is down. In this case, one third of the Kafka cluster is down but the whole service is still available in cloud since there are still two replica live in the cloud. And uh, the read and write are all available for all the clients in different data centers. The second scenario is the whole Uber data, uh, the whole Uber data center is down. Uh, in this case, not only one third of the Kafka cluster is down, but also the clients in the data center are down. Uh, but similar to the previous one, uh, the Kafka service are still available in the cloud. But in this case, the difference is the write stops, but uh, the client in the remote Uber data center can still read from the cloud. We also set up uh, VPN connections for those clients to read from the cloud. So next failure scenario is the Uber data center, whole Uber data center down plus one node in the cloud is down. It's similar to the previous, previous one, so the write stops, but uh, the clients in remote data center can still read from the cloud since there's at least one replica available in the cloud. So next scenario is when available zone on the cloud is down. Uh, similar to the first one, one third of the Kafka cluster is down, but the whole cluster is available in the cloud for read and write for other clients. And uh, the next failure scenario is one available zone down plus one node in either Uber data center or the other available zone is down. So in this case, unfortunately, the service stays only partially available since for some of the partitions, it only has one replica available. So when you try to produce to those partitions, it will fail. So as a workaround, we normally will try to produce the message to a different partition as a failover, and uh, this can improve the availability of the whole cluster. However, in this case, the reads are still 100% available for all the clients in different Uber data centers. So the final, net, uh, final failure scenario I want to talk about is the network failure. So network failure can happen between the Uber data center and the cloud. Uh, however, it has a low probability to happen since we can uh, set up redundant links between the Uber data center and the cloud. But in case it still happens, the outcome is the same as the whole Uber data center down scenario. The service is unavailable in the Uber data center, but uh, in the cloud, the service is fully available. The so clients can still read from the cloud. To mitigate this issue, we normally will trigger failover to other Uber data center. So uh, we have talked about our failure scenarios. So most of the failure scenarios comes from disk failure or node failure. So to decrease the probability of the, such failure, uh, in our own Uber data center, we use RAID 10 
to have a like a mirror of the data we have. And uh, in AWS, we use EBS with redundancy to improve the availability. So for the future work, uh, the work we want to do is further improve the performance of the XTC Kafka cluster. Uh, we already done a lot of work to improve the performance of our at least one Kafka cluster. We have already deployed the uh, improvements to the XDC Kafka cluster, and uh, there are still some more room to improve. Here's the link to the YouTube video about the perf uh, performance improvement we already done on the XDC Kafka cluster. All right, thank you. Do you have any questions? So it's in the order of tens of milliseconds. So the SLA that we provide is in terms of, uh, I think it's less than 100 milliseconds. But usually we are seeing uh, less than like uh, 10 milliseconds for the read and write. Yeah, there are several considerations. For first is since the uh, availability zone is very close to our own data center, so the latency cost is very low. And uh, second uh, case is when we do like um, when we do operations in the our own data center, the leader will move to the it, uh, move to cloud anyway. So it not worth the effort to keep everything in the Uber Data Center. And also, uh, one of the scenario we want to support is uh, in case uh, the whole Uber Data Center is done, we still need to ma make sure the data is available for read. And in this case, uh, I mean, it's meaningless to move all the leaders to the Uber, Uber Data Center. I hope that answers your question. Actually, let me repeat the question. So your question is, did we contribute the, this back to the open source Kafka? So we have been working closely with the open source community. We, uh, I think in the next release, we, uh, there will be some of the changes, the optimization changes that we did for ls one Kafka. But there's still work to need to be done to, uh, to port our changes to the open source version.